Let's take a look at a crystal oscillator. It's an electronic oscillator that uses a vibrating quartz crystal of a piezoelectric material. And when you apply a voltage to the crystal, it causes it to vibrate at its natural frequency. And the vibrating crystal generates an electric signal. Okay. So we're going to, here they are over here, and we're going to test one of them. And uh, in order to do that, we're going to use a, a CMOS inverter. I'm using a 7404 inverter. Okay. And I'm connecting it like this. So now on this inverter, the first resistor you're going to need is the uh, feedback resistor. Okay. So the, in the input impedance of the inverter and the crystal should match each other. And that's going to be somewhere between 1 mega ohm and, and 10 mega ohms. Uh, I, I wrote down 2 mega ohms here. I think I had a 1 mega ohm. I put that in there. Now, the series resistor, that's in the data sheet. And that's going to be at least a minimum of 40 ohms, okay? But if you don't know what that is, you don't have the data sheet for it, you can uh, get an approximate value that's equal to the, uh, the capacitive reactance of the load capacitance, okay? And the load capacitance is also in the spreadsheet. And in this case, the load capacitance is equal to 20 picofarads, okay? So if we uh, take uh, 2 pi times the frequency times the capacitance, it comes out to about 500 ohms. Now, if we use this 500 ohms here, that's going to cause a 50% voltage drop uh, due to uh, being a voltage divider. But, you know, the gain of the inverter will compensate for that drop, okay? So we're good with that, but uh, the minute 40 is the minimum. I'm going with 100 ohms, and uh, now the CL, this uh, this load capacitance here. In the data sheet, it says it's it's 20 picofarads. Okay. Now, if you change the load capacitance, it can cause the crystal to oscillate at a different frequency. Okay, it it, it can vary it a little bit. We're we're going to give we're going to try that. Okay, so the CL. Uh, is equal to the combination of C1 and C2. And then they give you this formula here. Well, when you look at this formula right off, it's, you say, well, well then it's not a parallel capacitance. That would be parallel resistance, but parallel capacitance, you know, you would just add them together. But this is for series. So what the deal is here is that the capacitors are in series with each other and the combination is in parallel with the crystal. So that's how they come up with this formula here. Okay, so now it says that it's 20, 20 picofarads, and uh, we have to add another, well, I'm using 22 here, so that would be 11, but we have to add another 5 to it, so it's going to be fairly close to 20, but 22 picofarads is pretty common there, okay? So um, that's what we're going with. And then we're going to put this on the scope and we're going to we're going to see what frequency we get and then i'm going to add another 22 over here picofarad to um to change the frequency and see how much it changes it by okay so here's the unit here this is the inverter here i've got my capacitance here and my uh, couple resistors and the load capacitors down here and then i'm going to uh, switch in this other capacitor over here and we're going to test it on the oscilloscope and see what it does so We'll go over to the oscilloscope and we'll take a take a look. All right, here we are at the oscilloscope, and if you take a look in the uh, upper right hand corner, it says that the crystal is at uh, sixteen point zero 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 six uh, megahertz, and if I add in that extra capacitor in there, it goes to. Uh, 15.9997 so by changing the, the load capacitance we can actually adjust that in we could probably get it right at uh, 1600 so uh, but uh, it's fairly close there but anyway uh, this is a good way to test the um, the uh, crystals and uh, it seems to work so uh, thank you